I apologize for this one, you guys. I played Meriwether a long while back. It was back when I had pink hair, and I can actually like kind of spike it a little bit, as you can see in the cam. But uh, I I played it as a uh... oh, where did I get it from? I wasn't playing a first draft version, but I was kind of doing like a sneak peek before the game released. So now apparently the game, you know, obviously the game's released because it's been a, like forever. Because I forgot to just render the damn thing. But here's a uh, glimpse of what you'll be able to, well, you know, go through when you play Meriwether. I did not finish the series, not as of this video. I will probably play it later in the future. But until then, let's begin. Alright, Meriwether? What? Meriwether. An American epic. I don't know much about this game. I got it on... Uh... Where did I get this game at? Let's take a look. Woobit? I think I got it on Woobit. Yes, I did. Thank you to, uh, Sword of Soft. Give me a chance to play this game. See how it goes. I don't know if it's... What's this game about? Well. Well, let's, let's find out, shall we? What's this game about? President Thomas Jefferson has commissioned you for a mission that will change the destiny of the United States. Along with your co-captain, William Clark, you are led to the Corps of Discovery, three dozen intrepid volunteers from the United States Army, from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean. That's over 3,700 miles of rivers, plains, forests, and mountains you will need to cross, and then retrace on the journey home. Meriwether is a single-player first-person RPG that comes with Combines a narrative richness of adventure games with resource management, hunting, and exploration to offer a unique play experience. The game implements the best parts of open world design and customized content to give you an experience that is driven by your actions. It remains true to history. The dangers you'll face are incalculable. You'll have to draw your own map as you go, for no reliable one exists. Shit. You have only supplies you can carry with you to fend off starvation, exposure, disease, and mischance of every variety. Given the difficulty of the journey, you are the only man in America to which the president would entrust this mission. You. And you are Meriwether Lewis. There you go. New game. Let's see how fast we feel at this. Philadelphia, 1803. Let's go on an adventure! This is like... Walking simulator type of graphics? Okay, this is kind of a refresher from playing Walking Dead. Movement is really fast, though. I can't do anything about it. Oh, well. I guess it's this. Gather yeah, woodpile? Oh, okay. Can we do something with the bucket? There's a hole in my bucket, dear lies. No, really, there's a hole in it. Like right there. Fix it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Do anything with the plants? Oh, can we pick them? Unknown. What do you mean unknown? Do you not know what a garden is? Alright, uh. No spyglass. Pay a visit to Dr. Wistar. Oh, let me out! Let me out! I did nothing! No, really, I haven't done anything yet. 
Oh shit, bro. You can't just stand behind a door and scare me. Hey to Dr. Casper Wistar. Good evening, Dr. Wistar. Thank you so much for inviting me to dinner tonight. Oh, why not just invite thee to dinner, my friend? I have a surprise for thee. Oh shit, they use this language. <laughs> oh. Follow me. Thou wilt not believe thine eyes. Your head is awfully flat. I just- I don't want to be rude, but... I feel like it needs to be said. What the? Kill a mammoth? How do you get upstairs? Thou hast a flat head, sir. Hey look, there's a map. The liars. It does come with a map. The Great American Incognitum. Incognitum. Dr. Wistar, these are wondrous. Am I mistaken, or are these woolly mammoth bones? Dr. Wistar is nearly bursting out of scale with pride. As a proper Quaker. Quaker oatmeal. However, he does his best to conceal it. They are. I arrived recently from an excavation at Big Bone Lake, near Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio? Bones of the Woolly Mammoth, the Great American Incognitum. Incredible. Increase your scully authority. You're a crusader against ignorance. You'll be a great ambassador for science. They're priceless to a natural philosopher. Your crusader against ignorance. Uh, I'm gonna go with scientist. You will surely be the jewels of your cabinet curiosities. Scientists and laymen alike will come from the four corners of the earth to see these miraculous bones. Please tell that to Elizabeth. She tires of the mess I am always making of our house with bones and books. Where's Mrs. Wistar? I would like to thank her for having me over. She is personally upstairs with the children and the good Dr. Rush. Dr. Rush is completely smitten by your children, is he not? Are you sure they're not, uh, doing something upstairs? He's a crystal scholar and a curmudgeon to boot. Put him in front of a child and he suddenly turns into a doting grandfather. Can he like treating your gout? He does what he can, but at my age, I think Providence, I am delivered from worse affliction. Oh, I think. What? You must take better care of yourself. No is a safe haven you for learned men. It would be a shame if you had to close your doors to deal with health. Upon thy return from the trek across North America, I expect thee will frequent my salon often. Is that where you get your face done? Your salon? And speak of thy voyage, Jefferson has entrusted me with secret information about the nature of thy mission. Indeed, he asked me to consult you for advice. I certainly applaud Jefferson's ambition, but I fear we are asking too much of thee. Not only must thou cross the entire continent without even a proper map to guide you. Every time you select a facet, it fills a black bile. Why does it fill a black bile? This sounds bad. I make prudent decisions. I will carry the boat on my back if I have to. Uh, no. Let's cross that river when we get there. Y you mean ocean? To know, we must explore. It does sound bad, what the heck? Hmm, I like diplomat and also scientist. Well, it's, it's pretty obvious I'm no freaking leader or soldier. Let's cross that room when we get there. There's that goop. Idle speculation only engenders fear. There's no need to invent danger in advance. We've studied the matter and prepared thoroughly. I am ready to face this challenge. Nowhere will wisdom and prudence be more important than when thou deals with the Indians. 
Well, some may be warlike. That would find most of them to be reasonable men. Too many folks speak of conquering the Indians. All we need is friendship with them. I'll be careful, Dr. Wistar. If they preach peacefully, I shall welcome them with open arms. Many warlike tribes will rue the day they were focused into a fight. Dr. Wistar sighs heavily. What is... Sir. I know it's bad and I shouldn't, like, say it, but... All I can think of is Down Syndrome. Sorry. Not saying anything bad against them, it's just... He reminds me. I don't know. I just looked that out. That didn't happen. <laughs> I suppose that's the right approach. It was a Quaker, goddamn Quaker oatmeal. But I can't help but think that all men are our friends. We must seek to forge a lasting peace, or we'll disdain this continent to centuries of war and suffering. From upstairs, you hear the startling crash of pottery breaking. There's silence for a moment. And you hear Elizabeth will start say, Oh dear, it's his favorite. So, I'm pretty sure they're having like rough sex up there, and they broke something. Just, just what I'm thinking. Give me, Captain, but it seems a matter upstairs requires my attention. Get your clothes on! Get your clothes on! In the meantime, thou wilt find bread and cheese in my study. Please partake of it. Well, if I'm lactose intolerant, I am, actually. Oh, and Dr. Barton should be arriving any moment. If he does arrive, wouldst thou kindly let him in? It would be my pleasure. Get out of here. Okay, give me my cheese. Some cheese. Weren't you going upstairs? I swear I thought you were. So wait, did I steal his lumber outside? Same as strangers. We're good. I take his pottery. Seems like a wealthy dude. Why is he just standing there? Oh, what was that? What? Did I hear something? Oh. Read the history of the Moravian mission among the Indians of North America from its commencement? The present time with a preliminary account of the Indians. By George, that's a long title. Eat some Ari Devores. Oh, I thought someone was telling me that. Oh my. Part 1. Chapter 1. Hints concerning the origin of the Indian nations. A summary view of them and of their country. Why are random words capitalized? Did they not have editors back then? The first Europeans who came to North America found this immense continent inhabited by numerous nations, all of whom are comprehended under the general name of Indians. Their numbers have been often overrated, owing to the different names frequently given to one nation. As to their origin, there is no certainty. The investigations even of the most learned have produced nothing but conjectures more or less probable. Or will I detain my readers with a repetition, much less enter into a review of them. Those seem to be nearest the truth who join the celebrated Dr. Robertson in supposing Tartary in Asia to be the native country of all American Indian nations. It is my intention to confine myself to an account of only two of these nations, namely the Delaware and Araku. I shit, I don't know how to say these names. Araqua? I don't know. The Delawares are divided into three tribes. The Unami are considered as the head of the nation. The Winalachikos. I am so sorry. <laughs> the Wunas are next in rank, and then follow the Monfis. Monfis. The name Delawares was undoubtedly first given to them by the Europeans. They call themselves 
linolen ape that is Indian man. Indian man. Or Oponochki, that is, a people living towards the rising of the sun, having formerly inhabited the eastern coast of North America. The name is likewise given to them by the other Indian nations. The Iroquois have received their name from the French, and most historians who have written of them make use of it. But the English call them the Six Nations, as they now consist of six nations in league with each other. Formerly, they were called the Five Nations, five only being joined in the alliance. As we shall speak of them, both in their former and present state, I shall, for the sake of prosperity, confine myself to the name of Eric Iroquois. They call themselves Aquanoshioni, that is, United People, always to remind each other that their safety and power consisted in a mutual strict adherence to their alliance. Others call them Mingos and some Maqua. These six confederate nations are the Mohawks, Onida, Onondaga, Kajuga, Seneca, Tuscarora. The latter joined the confederacy about 70 years ago. The rest of the nations either in league with the Delawares and Iroquois or connected with them by some means or others are the Machians, Chihuanof, Cherokees, Richtwees, Obiachanos, Bus, Moshkos, Chukashas, Chippewas, Ottawas, Utewo. That was it. That was it. So I'm pretty sure I fudged up all those names. I apologize if like you're an Indian and your relatives are those. Can I turn the page? No. Oh man, that was a mouthful. It's this one. <laughs> Read a voyage to the Pacific Ocean, undertaken by the command of His Majesty for making discoveries in the Northern Hemisphere in the years 1776, 77, 78, 79, and 80. It's just odd that, like... Do they take text from, like, actual textbooks? It's just weird you can't turn the page to finish a sentence. I'm not gonna read that. Observations on Modern Gardening Open Skill Tree What's this? When it's available Unlocks the Telescoping Spyglass So we need like 4 points for this? It says 4 Extra Whiskey Adds a Whiskey Barrel to Camp Teach your dog to retrieve sticks and birds. Okay. Plus one food. The star's table is quintessentially Quaker. Simple, but laden with the finest foods available. Even has Cheshire cheese, all the way from Connecticut. With a long voyage right ahead around the corner, you don't know when next you'll be able to taste good cheese. Maybe never again. Maybe you're gonna get scalped by an Indian. Who hates you for mispronouncing their uh, nation. As you're filling your cheeks with cheese, you hear a knock at the door. God, I hate that when your like, cheeks are full. You gotta answer the door. It's so annoying. Then you're in a stranger's house, you gotta figure out where the door is. I guess I should have looked through the window first. Was that rude? I feel like that was rude. Oh, you're still there. Benjamin Barton. What's this? Has Dr. Wistar hired you as butler? Dr. Wistar is presently fetching Dr. Rush, but I consider it an honor to open the door for you. The debt I owe you for the instruction you've given me in the natural arts is beyond my ability to repay. Dr. Barton is visibly flattered. 
In a fawning, Captain Lewis, you are not one of simpering students. Am I not? I guess I must still be your most eager pupil. Eager, you say? Let's find out just how eager. Follow me into the garden, if you'd be so kind. What are you gonna do to me out here? Those high heels? Are you wearing stockings? Or look at that body. Or look at that body, okay. As you can see, Dr. Wistar has been busy gardening. He's recently planted several specimens of a species you may be familiar with from long ago, with which you will soon be reunited. Your task is to perform a proper taxonomy of the plant. If you are to fulfill President Jefferson's mission during your voyage across the continent, identifying new species must be second nature to you. I shall return shortly with my report. Um, 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 um. Like a sample drawn on the right. Eh. So, uh, shit, I don't know. Wait, they all. Is it the same plant? They all look the same. Dauntless? Moral increase to Dauntless. Sweet William. That's the plant name? Well, okay. we're gonna just gonna trample all over Sweet William. Well done, Sweet William, a member of the Carnation family, perennial, edible, and a staple of cultivated gardens since the 16th century. You have a keen mind for the natural sciences. With a mentor like you, how could I help but learn? Your good breeding prompts you to heap under to heap undeserved praise on me. I told you how jealous I am of you? On several occasions, Doctor, and every time I told you that you would be most welcome on this journey, your botanical expertise would be invaluable. You both know I would only prove a hindrance, Captain. I am an academic. This adventure is meant for hardier men than I, alas. The best way for me to assist in this expedition is to make sure I have imparted to you all the knowledge you need to succeed. I feel eminently well prepared for what lies ahead. Do you, Captain? Do you really? We can test your preparation with a few questions. Here's the first. The making of Meriwether Lewis. You're passing around the peace pipe with some new Indian friends. You take your first puff and discover the smoke tastes acrid and foul. Perhaps it's even toxic. What do you do? Oh man. Where are my men not smoke? Oh no. Do cries to smoke on despite the personal risk? Uh, no. Offer my own tobacco as a replacement? I feel like that'd be rude. A scientist. If I can study the plant from whence the filler came, I can perhaps make a determination as to whether it is safe to smoke. I would ask for a sample. Spoken like a true naturalist. Onward. With each dialogue choice, you gain a skill point for your facet you choose. At the end of this character creation level, you gain a special bonus based on the facet you chose most. You are navigating through a treacherous stretch of rapids. On the far bank, you see a bush that may be new to science. Into the bush will not only be dangerous, but will certainly delay your travels. What do you do? I dispatch my men to retrieve. <laughs> well, I don't want to kill myself. Volunteers. Dispatch my men. What makes navigating a flotilla is that the members of the party will have varying skill as boatmen. 
Or maybe treacherous waters for some might be simple navigation for others. I would send my two most qualified men to retrieve the bush whilst helping the rest of the corpse get through the rapids safely. I wish them Godspeed. In the meantime, here's your last question. You and your men are starving. You'll all be dead in days if you do not find food quickly. You've warned your men not to eat unfamiliar roots, but they are so hungry they dig up the roots of an unknown species. Hourly, they look edible, but many toxic roots do. Do you eat them? That's stupid. You do not permit anyone from eating. Am I meant from touching them? I eat and monitor what happens to me? Are you kidding me? The leader choice sucks. Study my books. Knowledge here is key. I've examined my books for several similar species and used my best judgment to determine if the roots are safe to eat. So, Doctor, did I pass your test? Dr. Barton plants his tongue firmly in his cheek. To be honest, I have the slightest idea. Dot dot dot. So the point of this exercise was what, exactly? To amuse me, mostly. Also to illustrate that oftentimes the best answers we can give is no more than an educated guess. I've been the education. Now it's up to you to guess correctly. I will do my best, my dear mentor. Now. Do you have any more tricks you wish to play on my- on your gullible student? Not a one. Let's repair to the dining room. Let's repair? Let us repair to the dining room for a drink, shall we? All this philosophize, philosoph philosophizing? Why are words so weird sometimes? Makes me long for a nice glass of Madeira. I could kiss you, but I won't. Hey, how? Party over here. Good evening, Captain. How are you? In general, or are you asking your capacity as a physician? I have a little need to inquire after your health, my friend. You're one of the filth fittest, filthiest specimens, really. Fittest specimens I've ever seen. The strongest man can die with surprising ease. The journey ahead of you will be fraught with peril. They're really trying to frighten me in this game. That I know all too well. The experience has taught me that the right combination of courage, courtesy, and Kentucky rifles will suffice to handle most any situation. Well said, Captain. Do you ever remain so doughty in the face of danger? But take my advice and be mindful of overconfidence. It's a foregone conclusion that many of your men will die. Perhaps most. Possibly all of you. Always remember, at least one of you must return in order for this adventure to be of any value to your country. You must choose discretion over valor, every single time. Failure to act can be just as deadly. I will heed your advice. I will apply your advice as appropriate. After choosing the same facet three times, you can no longer choose it. In this case, science is no longer available. Village act can be just as deadly. It's true. Begging your pardon, Doctor, but I know from experience that hesitation at the moment of truth can be the worst choice of all. My life in the military has taught me to value thought and action equally. I do not mean to tell you your business. There's a reason the person that has chosen you for this mission and not me. My job is to train you in the medical arts. And if I say so myself, I've done an exemplary job of it. I still have much to learn. You know more than you think. I can prove it. This is another test. I have a most surly and insubordinate patient who is suffering through a nasty spell of gout. If you can treat a patient as cantankerous and disagreeable as he, there's no medical challenge you are unworthy to face. Oh? And who is this patient? Isn't that the dude that's here? I believe Dr. Rush is referring to me. That's what I thought. None other. You're Dr. Wissar Scout, Captain Lewis, and show us just how much you know of the medical arts. Oh, okay. 
Come here, you. Start by guessing the right medicine bottle to treat with star skin. Guessing? She's dreaming for gout. God. I don't freaking know. My dad's got gout. Well, he had it. A star means this bottle shares one trait. Color row column with the correct medicine. Color row or column. Gee, that's helpful. Your patient is feeling much relieved. Oh, yes. We're awesome. Come at me, bro. Well done, Captain. What a fine field doctor you become. Thanks, Holy, for your mentoring, doctor. I guessed. <laughs> Aye, but maybe all for naught. Medical challenges before you may be too difficult for any man. It's true my, I may fail, but I am determined to succeed in this mission, or perish in the attempt. Dr. Wistar nods in agreement with you, but Dr. Rush smirks cynically. I am certain the soldiers under your command will find your words encouraging, Captain. But amongst ourselves, let's speak the truth. If some of you are going to return from the wilderness of Louisiana, you must be absolutely missionary in your calculations. If you can save the life of most of your men by sacrificing a few, you must do so, and without the slightest hesitation. Any sentimental devotion you have to preserving human life may cost you every man you have. Captain Lewis is well aware of the burdens of leadership. There's no need to lecture him. Oh, let us see about that. Captain, suppose one of your men suffers from venereal disease and is complaining of a severe burning sensation in the nether regions. His crotch? The treatment is an infection of a mercury compound administered via the man's urethra. <laughs> However, the man is squeamish and attempts to refuse treatment. What do you do? Offer him an extra ration of whiskey? Uh, no, the whiskey is mine, thank you. Accept his wish not to be treated. Order him to submit to treatment. In do it. <laughs> you will, uh, gosh, acquiesce or face a court martial for insubordination. I will not suffer fools refusing my attempts to treat them. I suspected you would see as much. Next question. One of your men has taken ill. You know not why. You have let his blood, given up your purgatives, and applied. Peruvian bark, all to no avail. He cannot be long for this world, but he continues to linger. You've delayed your travels a week already by treating him. What do you do? A week? Not adventuring yet. Ask him what he wants. I don't know. I would consult him with the man himself and ask him if he did. Ask him his desire. And then follow through with it to the utmost of my ability. Hmm. Interesting. Your final question. One of your men has gangrene on his left foot is spreading. The man begs you not to amputate. What do you do? Cut off the dead flesh and hope for a recovery? You're gonna... See, if we strike the man's wish, he's probably gonna die. Well, diplomat it is. With judicious trimming, perhaps the gangrene can be arrested via amputation. I would start with that compromise and continue to assess the patient's condition. I would wager a year's pay you would do the same. To be perfectly honest, Captain, I do not know what I would do in that situation. Gangrene is malicious, capricious, and difficult to treat under the best of circumstances. What are you saying, Doctor? 
part of being a doctor, my friend, is knowing that despite your best efforts, you will make mistakes. Costly ones. Some may cost your patients their lives. But remember, those patients would have died anyway without you. Forgive yourself. I will try to, Dr. Rush. And speaking of saving lives, I would not dream of embarking on the voyage without at least 50 dozen of your famous pills. Happy pills? Your mercury laced laxatives are a wonder. Laxatives? I will give them to my men for everything that ails them. Of course, Captain. I'll be sure you'll receive all you need. Fare you well. Return to us soon and in good health. I will, Dr. Rush. Until then. Can I get some of the laxatives now? I thought I saw something. I've been eavesdropping on thy conversation with the doctors. They were quite telling. Character creation, facet choices. Leader 3, Soldier 0, Diplomat 3, Scientist 3. Starting personality. Leader, Diplomat, Scientist, bonus granted. Use these points to purchase skills from skill tree, accessible at any desk. Thou art a natural born leader. Thy natural charisma and decisiveness will no doubt benefit you in your journey. Thou art thoughtful, empathetic, skilled in language, a natural diplomat. I dare say the Indians will be falling over themselves to befriend thee. Thine intelligence, tolerance for ambigu ambi ambiguity. Ambiguity. It takes me a moment. And novel insights all but guarantee thy success. I hope you're right, Doctor. I pray I am up to the daunting challenge ahead of me. Doctors, it may be that I will ultimately fail my mission, but so it will be through no fault of yours. You could do more to no more to prepare me, and so I would like to propose a toast. The Voyage of Discovery. <laughs> Hopefully not all of us will die. May we accomplish all our goals. May we return home, glad in the knowledge that we have done our duty to our country and advanced her cause. Hear, hear, says everyone. Prison's House, Washington, D.C., three years earlier. Ah, Mr. Lewis, good morning. You were up early this morning, I noted. Yes, Mr. President. Dark thoughts had a dart armor. I strolled the hallways for a bit to clear my head. Too much like your father, I dare say. First with melancholia. I am sorry for it. I am sorry to have disturbed your rest, Mr. President. Nonsense. I am a light sleeper by nature. In this house, we have like two mice in a church. We live like two mice in a church. Thank you, sir. I am fit and ready to carry out whatever work you have for me. Excellent. It's of utmost importance that Congress receive this letter today. Let nothing prevent you from delivering it. I will carry it over immediately. Ah, not immediately. If you please, sir. I want to ask first if you have given any more consideration as to whom you would like to be your lieutenant on the voyage of discovery. Yes, sir. I would say, in fact, that I have come to a decision, assuming you agree, of course. To my mind, there's really only one man for the job. Why not keep me in suspense, good sir? Whom do you have in mind? William Clark. He was a former commanding officer of mine, and among the very finest soldiers ever to wear an American uniform. He is a fine outdoorsman, and completely calm in the face of danger, and no man in America will command more respect from soldiers or Indians. You say he was your former commanding officer? Are you sure you will uh, condescend to being your subordinate? That's something I wish to discuss with you, sir. I do not wish to ask Mr. Clark to be my subordinate. I wish to ask him to be my co-captain. I look at distaste across this Jefferson's face, but it's soon replaced by his usual dispassionate smile. Someone didn't like that answer. 
You reached the voyage of discovery to have two captains then? Yes, sir. I know it's a highly irregular. To say the least. Why if you differ on how to handle the situation? Whose opinion would carry the day? We will deliberate and come to an agreement, Mr. Clark. It's intelligent and re reasonable. I don't anticipate any problems. I think it's a bad idea, Mr. Lewis. I'm sure Mr. Clark is a fine officer. But you're the man I especially trained for this most important of missions. We would feel more comfortable if you had final say on all decisions. Let's see, appeal to Jefferson's respect for friendship. Appeal to Jefferson's pessimism. Let's purge melancholy. I am prepared to die for my country, sir. I am not prepared to allow my death to prematurely end our mission. Should I die, you'll be keenly grateful that a leader of Mr. Clark's skill is there to continue toward the Pacific. We both know the death toll on this voyage will be high. Well then, that was an answer. Very well, Mr. Lewis. Against my intuition, I shall petition Congress to appoint Mr. Clark as a captain. Thank you, sir. I'm sure Mr. Clark will be accept our offer. I don't think he was happy. I think he was upset. Anatomical observations. Introduction to the bones. The bones of what? End flashback. Open skill tree. Oh, what's this? Wait. Requires much more study. Starting to understand the species. Interesting, but many questions remain. Oh man. Geranium fully observed. I touch the fire. I touch the fire. Was it the same book? It is. Travels to the interior parts of North America in the years 76, 77, oh, 66, 67, 68. Mitchell a mechanic? mechanic? What? Open skill tree. Well, let's see. Hmm. I like the fact that you can be a spy. Your dog retrieves sticks and birds. That'd be helpful. They fetch. Let's see, diplomat. I don't think we really need extra whiskey. I do haggle. Seems like it would come in handy a bit more. Eater. Mobilize core. Issue command each day. Increases yield of wood gathering commands. Well, 
Let's issue a command each day. Hover over a soldier to see a skill. Alright, and flashback. I guess. Oh shit. Can I shoot him? Can I? There's my glass. What other hazardous things do we have? Oh. That's not what I want. It's definitely not what I want. I just, I want to see. Can, can I save game? Can't save game. Aw. Oh. I can't shoot him. I can't shoot him, you guys. Use each step in the correct order by pressing the corresponding key. More powder, place patch, place ball, ram ball, prime. Oh my god. This is annoying. Rifle reloaded. I can't shoot him though. That's poke, poke with a stick. Okay, I'm done. And flashback. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and hit the sub for more walkthroughs, playthroughs, and let's plays on the gaming experience.